my name is Bethany Ray, and I am a teaching artist with Meadow Arts, a nonprofit art organization located in Twisp, Washington. And today I'm going to teach you all how to make this snowflake here that includes the idea, ideas of radial balance. And so what you're going to need for this art project is um, some watercolor paints here and a little brush. Uh, oil pastels or crayons work as well. A uh, ruler. A uh, plate roughly the size of your watercolor paper. And water, a pencil, and salt. So go ahead and pause the video, gather all of these materials, and once you have all these materials, then you can come back and press play. So before we get started on our project, we're going to spend just a little bit of time talking about composition. What is composition? Well, composition in art is how you're arranging all the different parts together to create an art piece. And one thing to think about in arranging a composition in art is balance. And when I think of balance, one idea that comes to my mind is symmetry. Symmetry is how, thing, how a composition is divided and how you're putting all the different parts in each area of the composition. Today, more specifically, we're going to be talking about radial symmetry. Radial symmetry is when there's a center from which all the different parts of the art project or of the art piece come out. So for instance, radial symmetry in nature is like a sunflower. It has a same a center point from which everything comes out. Same thing like a starfish, here's the center and everything comes out and is equally balanced from that same center. So there's some examples in nature. Now for some examples in art. Here in art, this is a rose window that's located in Notre Dame Cathedral. And you can see everything comes out from the same center. All these different shapes seem to grow out, just kind of like the flower. Or like this Tibetan mandala same thing shares the same center and everything comes out from there and is equally spaced and balanced. So we're going to use that idea of balance and radial symmetry to create our snowflakes. So if I pull up the example again and we look at it, you notice that everything comes from this center point and spreads out. And for the most part, everything's pretty equal and balanced. So let's go ahead and stop here and Get your paper ready. We're gonna grab the plate and I'll show you the first next or first step. So the first thing you're gonna do is lay your plate down and with your pencil, trace all the way around the outside of the plate. Okay? Once you have your circle, then you can remove the plate. And now because of radial symmetry um, being based on the center, we have to figure out the center of our circle. So I'm going to use my ruler at this point and measure from one end to the other and I can see it's about ten and a quarter. So I'm going to go about five inches in and make a little mark. Okay? Then I'm going to go the other direction and go, let's see, about five inches in and make a little mark. So now I know that the center is right about here. Okay, so now that we found the center, I'm going to take my ruler and divide the circle in half by lining up my ruler against the little line there vertically. So I'm going to split the circle in half. So now my circle has two parts, one and two. So now I have a line running vertically. I'm going to take my ruler, line it up where the center is again, and split it in half once more horizontally. And so now my circle has one, two, three, four parts. We're going to keep dividing it though until we have eight parts to our circle. So I'm going to again take my ruler and find about center. If you want you can make a little mark. So I'm looking at this section right here and I'm going, hmm, that's about center. And hmm, that's about center. And if it's not totally perfect. It's 
not a big deal. Just do the best you can. You can also kind of switch things around. Let's see, I'm gonna go right about here and then draw a line. So, whoop, and that didn't show up. So let's do that one more time. Okay, there we go. So that's about center. Huh, it's a little crooked, no big deal. Okay, and same thing, we're gonna divide it once more. And I'm kind of thinking about where ha the halfway mark is and dividing my circle once again. So now I have eight parts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, now that we have eight parts, the next thing that we're gonna do is if I go back to my example, if we look back here, you're gonna first start by drawing a shape in the middle. Right here I have a diamond. And then we're gonna add shapes as we go out towards, out from the center. So let's start with the very middle though. So I'm gonna do a little diamond just by making these smaller little triangles. So here's a little triangle, here's a little triangle again the little triangle and now I have a diamond okay and then from this line out I'm going to create a pattern using shape so pattern is something that repeats so I'm going to do a pattern with triangles and I'm just going to keep adding triangles all the way up I think I'm going to do four triangles so you can either do the same thing as me or you can do something totally different and then in my original design, I ended with a diamond towards the top. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do a little diamond again, just kind of like the center, right? If we look at a diamond, it really is just two triangles connected. Okay, so there's one end, and I'm just going to repeat whatever you do on that first line. You're going to repeat on all one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the other seven lines so that they have four triangles and a little diamond at the top or four shapes of your choice and, and maybe a different shape up here. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep going around and doing this part. So you can go ahead and pause the video and do this first part. And then once you've finished creating all your designs that you want, you can press play again and then I'll let you know what the next step is. All right, so I'm done adding on the little triangles here and the diamonds. Um, and again, it's one, two, three, four, and then a diamond at the top. And I did that all the way around on each of the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines. And I'm noticing there's quite a bit of space in between. And so I've decided to go ahead and add in some circles. And I'm gonna keep with kind of this um, pattern of four triangles. So I'm going to do some, uh, I'm going to do four circles and I just start out again kind of towards the center and I go one, two, three, four, kind of close in the middle. Okay. Again, it's all right if it's not perfect, just do your best. And again, it doesn't have to be a circle. If you want to do something like a heart, if you want to do four hearts, totally fine. If you want to do four diamonds, four squares, it's your art, it's totally up to you on what design you want to do. So I'm just going to continue and do these all the way around. So again, you can pause the video and figure out what shapes you want in between each of the lines. And then once you've got all of those drawn in, then you can press play and we'll move on to the next part. Okay, so now that you've drawn your design, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back over everything that you've just drawn and fill in those spaces of your um, snowflake design, either with a white past oil pastel stick or you can also use a white crayon. Either one will work just fine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna outline first each shape. And once I've outlined, then I'm gonna fill in completely, okay? 
and outline the shape and then fill in completely all the way down. So I'm going to do this with every single shape that's in my snowflake design. And this is just going to require some patience, some focus. So if you just need to get up and stretch and take a break um, while doing this, that's totally fine. Also, it takes um, some focusing too with how you're holding your hand. So if you just need to stretch your hand every so often, that's fine too. But otherwise, just keep going and you're just gonna fill in each shape as well as going over the line too. So I'm gonna also go on top of the line and then I'm gonna also at the very end go all the way around and trace a circle. Actually, I'm gonna just do that now. And the reason for all of this is because the oil pastel, wherever we put the oil pastel down, the watercolor will not go in that spot. It's called um, oil pastel resist or, or watercolor resist because it's resisting or pushing back. So another way to think about it is everywhere that we're putting the oil pastel, we're kind of creating like a little barrier or a wall for the watercolor to not enter into. So wherever I'm putting that oil pastel, the watercolor will not go there. So again, go ahead and um, fill in all of your shapes. Make sure to outline, basically go over everything you did in pencil with your oil pastel. And then we'll come back for the next step. Okay, so now we're on to the exciting part. We get to fill in our snowflake with some fun watercolor. And um, what we're gonna do is a, a very specific technique in watercolor called uh, watercolor uh, wet and wet. Um, it's when you put wet pigment into, onto a wet surface. So the first thing that we're gonna do is just in one area of your snowflake, just fill it all up with water. So you're just going to use your brush and fill up that space with water. And just to make sure that it's all filled, I kind of tilt my paper around to see if it's shiny. And if it's shiny, it means it's wet. So I'm good to go for the next part, which I'm going to dip my brush in some color. I'm going to start off with blue. And you can just kind of dab your brush around. And as you dab your brush around, the paint's going to really spread because you have a wet surface. But not only am I going to use blue, I'm going to also use a little bit of purple. And because my paper is still wet, it's going to give the chance for that blue and that purple to really spread around. So I'm going to do that a little bit more in here, a little more here. And as you can see, that oil pastel is doing a good job of resisting the watercolor. So it's pushing back, it's telling the watercolor, hey, you can't go here. And now I can see those awesome designs, those shape designs I put down earlier because of that resist. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in another space with lots of water here. And now I can kind of tell where, it is, um, where the water is just because of it being blue. So it's a little easier. And then again, I'm going to add a dash of purple and some blue in some areas. There we go, and it's gonna keep spreading. That's like what the, that's the fun part about watercolor. It's gonna keep spreading all the way up until the point until it dries. So it's gonna change quite a bit. Um, and let's go two sections at a time. So I did this section and that section for two. And while it's still wet, we're going to add a little bit of salt. So the salt is a fun technique in watercolor to create some texture. It's gonna spread a little salt on there just in the areas that I, I painted. And you're gonna leave that to dry. And what's gonna happen is that salt is gonna soak up the watercolor pigment and it's gonna leave a little bit of um, white space where the salt is. And I'll show you at that at the very end when it's dry. But I'm gonna go ahead and continue two by two and fill up my whole snowflake. So we're gonna do two parts, fill it in with paint, then sprinkle it with salt. Okay, and then you're gonna move on to the next two areas, fill it with watercolor, put salt all the way around your snowflake until you filled in the entire image. And <laughs> go ahead and do that now and then uh, once you've done that then you can 
press play again and I'll show you the final steps. Okay, so once you've painted your snowflake and you've added the salt on it, make sure to set it aside to do, uh, allow it to dry. It probably will take a couple hours. And once it's completely dry, then you can go back to it and before you hang up or cut it out or put it somewhere in your house, um, you're going to just take your finger and kind of brush off the little bits of salt here and there just so that that doesn't fall all over the floor. And you're welcome to do this with, yeah, either your finger, you could even get like a dry brush and do that, but you'll just scrape it off. And once that's all off, then you're done. So now you have this beautiful snowflake. And again, one of the reasons why it is so beautiful, going back to how we're thinking about composition and balance, we use radial symmetry to divide the circle into these equal parts. So everything is coming again, radial symmetry is based on everything coming out from that center and spreading out evenly into all these wonderful parts. So well done on using a radial symmetry and making your beautiful snowflake today. All right, well thank you for joining me and creating your very own snowflake based on radial symmetry. I hope you had fun today and I look forward to the next time that we can make some art together. Bye for now.